one of you writes it to me? I said, you can't put that before the court. Why? It's, it's, it's wrong. It's, 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 it's not written properly. It's, it's wrong. You've got three different jurisdictions going on. Which jurisdiction do you want? Well, then don't write it that way. So I said, I know you're speaking it that way, but you're not writing it that way. So there's an there's a art to writing this stuff. And like I say to folks, you got to master the writing, writing for the court. Because once you master writing, I said, uh, you don't have to appear in court. Once they see that you know what you're doing in writing, they're going to run like hell from you. If they see what you're writing, that you don't know what the hell you're doing, but you're writing, oh, they're going to accelerate your court date so you appear tomorrow. They're going to want to jump all over you. They're going to read this crazy free man of Montana nonsense that you're writing and go, oh boy, this guy ain't got an effing clue. We want him in court now. When I write the stuff, that the guy Carlos said, the, the, the tax assessor from L.A. said to him, uh, well, we're real busy and we'll uh, we'll foreclose on your house or we'll put it up for auction uh, sometime in 2015, but we're kind of real busy right now. We'll get back to you real soon. But when they realized that you're an easy target, that's what he was supposed to have his house organ on July 12th. He said, man, he said, when you gave that letter to the tax assessor, she wrote back in uh, one day. He said, I got an answer for her. And he said, she said, well, we're kind of really busy. No, you know, we ain't got time to look into your uh, auction on the 12th. So you know what, uh, uh, we're going to have to put this off to 2015 when we have some more time to uh, assess the situation. I was like, yeah, she went like hell. He says, oh my God, Carl. He says, I've been writing this lady for seven fucking years. Man, nobody ever answered me back. They just kept saying, pay the, I forgot what the tax assessment bill was, he kept saying. They got a name for it out there in California. He said, just said, there's just a remitted check. They got almost $70,000. And they just backed off. It's when you write it, man, they just back off. When you write it a certain way, listen to my old show where that little Irishman said that. He said, he's got a second grade education. He said, but I put three sentences in front of the court. And the judge said, oh, strike one, oh, strike two, oh, strike three. This guy's a play, a home run. Oh, this is good. And then the younger prosecutor asked the older prosecutor, do you have to answer these three questions? And the older prosecutor said, we'll find out soon enough. And then the judge asked the little guy, who was back in like five years of child support, said, uh, do you want to prosecute the prosecutor? It's your turn. If you want to, you want to put him on a stand? You want to, you want to, you want to prosecute the state? You want, you want to call the state as a witness? Go for it. He said, I ain't never seen this, so go for it. You want to do it? Do it. And the little guy, when he called me on the phone, like the following week, he said, I don't know what the judge was telling you to do. The judge was telling you, it's your turn. If you want to cross-examine the plaintiff, call the state and you have to stand. Do it. He's going to love to see them appear, too. The judge wants to see the state of Indiana appear, too. He's going, oh, this is going to be, I always wanted to work the state of Indiana. I work for them. I got a paycheck with the name on it every page. You know what? I never knew Indiana wore a dress or Indiana wears a slacks and a tie. <laughs> the judge thought it was hysterical what I wrote. The plaintiff must appear. So do it. Now, yeah. well, what do you know about uh, support? Now that you mentioned child support and all that. Like I said, when, when it's a woman going after you, you're screwed. When it's a state going after I, I can help you guys. When state's going after you, county going after you, city's going after you, government's going after you, any fictional entity going after you, Bank of America going after you, uh, Wells Fargo, uh, anybody going after you that's a fiction is easy. When a man is coming after another man, or a man coming after a woman, a woman coming after a man, you are on your own. You better just kiss and make up because it could go any way the jury wants to swing it. However you put on a s silly... American Idol performance in front of the jury, if she cries, you're going to lose. It's like I always say, man, you don't want, I would never go to court against a little old lady. I'd always go in front of the judge. I would never go in front of a jury. I'm going to lose. As soon as they see that poor little Tiffany girl or granny, I'm going to get burned. Even if she's just flat out lying. That's why I want to go in front of the guy in a black robe. Well, that's what I call it. It's funny if you don't, don't really know. I, I call them uh, the man in the black robe. I call them the black robed ones, B-R-O, or the bros. So if you ever hear me on my past shows, call them, well, when you go in front of the bro. Okay. It's the, right. the black, black robe. Could be a Ted yeah, also, though, right? Yeah, yeah. well, no, it's the bro. <laughs> it's, the, it's the black robed one. I don't know if they wear purple robes, the Jesuits. I don't know if they go higher up and they wear red like cardinals. I don't, I don't freaking know. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get into any of that Jesuit nonsense. I, I don't even... All I try to show people is how to get in and out of court against fictional entities. That's all I help you guys do. That's all I want this show to be about. 
you know, not about Jesuits, not about the Pope, not about Reptoids, not about the Queen of England. You got guys got coast to coast, so you got Alex Jones and you got Planet X, you know, crowd to listen to that stuff. I just want to help people write the paperwork, understand what they're writing, file a damn paperwork. If you got to, you know, utter it in open court and press it upon a record, God bless you and do it. That's all I'm trying to help people do. Because ninety percent of the people, uh, well, times of the people having problems is with a fictional entity. Very rarely is it man on man. So that's why courts houses were getting very bored a hundred years ago, because there's very little issues between one man taking another man to court. There was nothing for them to do. How many times did you ever have to go to court, to court because another man accused you of doing wrong? Never, never. Me, never. I, I can always guarantee almost everybody listening, never. It's always the government saying you're doing something wrong, speeding, you know, spitting, you know, littering, you know, jaywalking, something. You're always doing something that's been wrong to them. But what's funny is it's not wrong. You just, well, all you're doing is violating one of their codes, which they can never bring anybody forward who wrote the damn code to testify in court and offer an affirmation that that's what the code means. Well, everybody's just guessing what the code means, and the code is just actually a codification of the public law. The public law is like, you know, uh, say 10,000 pages long, but they'll take that code and make one sentence out of it. So is that truly what the public law said, that you can't spit on a sidewalk? I don't know. Or whoever the, the lawyer boys who went to the uh, uh, the, the legislator, like uh, the Library of Congress for the feds, whatever those lawyer boys from uh, Thompson's, Canada, they're the ones who come down here and codify our public law. It's kind of convenient that Thompson sends down Canadians to codify American public law, the United States public law. And they take this 10,000 page uh, public law that's enrolled in the Library of Congress and write one sentence and say, well, that's what the public law reads. Oh, really? You got all that into one sentence? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the gist of it. You spit on a sidewalk and you out fine. Really? Hmm. Can we bring the, the law to the court? Because without the law in the court, you have no case. So that's what I tell people all the time. Why don't you just have them bring the law into the court? How are they going to do that? I don't know. Go to the Library of Congress, come and bring the fucking sheepskin in with all the congressmen signs. And then show you where your name is on that damn document where you're held liable to act according to the signatures. It'll never happen. It's, the law is so simple, it's scary. And it's like what I say when these, these people are all crazy about this Obamacare Act. It's, it just makes you laugh or whatever. Affordable Care Act, whatever it's called. They passed this law, say, in 2010. Barack Obama and his administrative, the executive branch, modified public law 11 times so far. So is it the public law that was signed by your congressman? No. He's already made 11 changes to it. He's already amended the public law 11 times. So is it the law? No, not anymore. Now it's a regulation. Once it gets into the executive branch and an executive agency gets their hands on it, it's the uh, NRCs, it's the, it's the regulations. An agency creates regulations out of the public law. They modify it to fit the agency's ability to carry out the public law. Is it the law? No, it's a regulation. This, this is all a scam. But that's fine. It's a lovely, beautiful scam if you're a United States citizen then just do what the hell you're told to do because as a United States citizen, a citizen just means you're a member of the family. And Barack Obama is Papa. And you just do what your Papa tells you to do. Because a citizen means, civis means, means member of a family. And believe me, you're one of the little children under Papa Obama. Which is fine. If that's how you want to live, God bless you. Some people want to be part of some, you know, Gambino crime family. Some people want to be under Obama, you know, federal family. That's fine. I got no problem with that. Nobody's forcing you to be a Gambino. Nobody's forcing you to be an Obama family member. Nobody's forcing you. It's all free will. If you think that you're going to get your knuckles broken because you leave the Gambinos, okay. If you think you're going to get your kneecaps whacked because you're going to leave the Obama family, okay. Whatever you people are afraid of, you know, whatever helps you get through the day, why you still do what you do, okay. If you don't think you could uh, do your own thing, okay. If you still think you're, you're scared, okay. Or the consequences of just saying, mm, no, I don't want to be. I don't want to do this anymore. Why? I don't see a benefit. Is there any benefit? It's like, well, if you don't do a little wacky knees, it's like, isn't that called extortion? If you don't, if I don't do this, if I don't give you money and you put me in jail because I didn't pay you money by April 15th, isn't that extortion? 
Yeah. Well, you better just pay us money by the 15th of April, or we're, we're going we're gonna to break your kneecaps, bust your thumbs, and throw you in a cage. Oh, really? Isn't that extortion? I had a very uh, conversation with a friend of mine last, uh, a couple of days ago. You know, if, uh, if they came in to you, let's like, say, you want to mention Gambinos or whatever, they came in and said, you know what, you got to pay me you know, 100 bucks a week. Or, you know, something might happen to you, or something might happen to you, or maybe something might happen to you. I mean, that's extortion. I mean, that's just extortion. But the government, they can come around and say, well, you got to pay me by April 15th. Because you that's know right. what? I got the guns in jail. No, you have and to. Because, you no, know, you have to. Because you signed a contract and you, you have to be bound by your contract. You're bound. You bound yourself. I haven't made any kind of contract arrangement between me and any of this crazy thing called uh, QRS, PRS, uh, TRS, what do you guys call it? Uh, uh, CRS? Oh no, you guys call it IRS. That's right. That's what you guys bind yourselves to. I don't bind myself to any any ridiculous acronym. I'm not bound. What I'm saying is, that's what people do. They bind themselves to an acronym. If you want to bind yourself to a CRS or a TRS or whatever the hell they call it, HRS, what do they call it? Oh no, they call it IRS. That's right. If that's what you wish to do, Nobody put a gun to your head and told you to lift up that pen and write on a piece of paper. Nobody. Nobody ordered you to take a piece of paper and put a pen in your hand and write. It was actually done by fraud, though. Right? No, it wasn't. Nope. You put a pen in your hand and you started to write. But they, if you write down the people, they didn't say nope. what they, they didn't say anything. Who said? Did somebody call you on the phone and tell you you better put a pen and paper in your hand and start writing? No, they didn't say you with the contract. There you go. The Gambino will come to your, your store and say, you pay us 50 bucks a week or you're going to have a horrible accident here. Or your brains and your signature will be on. That's whatever, but the IRS never says that to you. You just think they say that to you. You have this mis crazy misconception or belief that they, they have some sort of power to do something to you. Right. That's your problem. If you also have nightmares at night, that's your problem. If you can't get over the bad dream, you can't get over the bad dream. If you're going to let the bad dream terrorize you every night, and when you go to bed and then you can't get a good night's sleep, oh, well. I said, look, I'm sure, I don't know, I, like I said, I can only speak for me. Because when I was a little kid, I realized any time I had a bad dream, if I tried to hide or went under the covers or went under the bed or turned on the light, the, the bad dream just kept reoccurring. Until I said, hey, you know what, enough of this bullshit, I'm going to fight back. And then uh, the bad guy, the monster would disappear. And then, poof, you know, next next week I'd have another bad dream and another situation would pop up. And I'd have to beat that situation. I'd always have to beat the situation. That's just my, you know, me, that was my mind showing me how to work through uh, tough situations in my sleep instead of having to deal with in reality. If some tiger was going to come out behind a tree, this is what you do. What works and what don't work. So I'm doing all my moves while I'm dreaming. I see, I watch these cats and dogs sleeping right next to me right now. They're all dreaming. They're all going through their jungle moves. They're all practicing. Right. And this is exactly what happened to me up until eight months ago. I swear to God. I was practicing every court move in the book. I was sometimes as a woman judge, sometimes as a guy judge, sometimes as one prosecutor, man prosecutor. I was going through every courtroom scenario about up until eight months ago. And I am done. I figured out every way they can wrangle me around in a courtroom. I got it. Every move, everything they could say, every angle they could come at me, I got it. And now I don't dream about that no more. I got it covered. And that's when your party knows, when you got it covered. It's like, you don't dream about it no more. It's like, I got this. I got every damn angle. If they say this, boom, do this. If they say this, boom, do that. If they she, she says this, boom, she says that, boom. I mean, more, as I said to people, I said, uh, some of my best writing was that uh, when as soon as I woke up in the morning, I'd get on my computer, I kept a laptop right next to me, and boom, I just start typing everything I went through and all the old courtroom scenarios and what she said, he said, how to do it, and da 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 I did some of my best writing when I was exhausted at 2, 3 in the morning or when I first woke up. After I just dreamed about it all for one hour sleeping. But that, that's what I'm saying. If you want to believe that they're doing this to you, I just read to you what Barack Obama said at 8.18 on October 17th. He told you. He just gave you full disclosure. You are self-governing. Well, use that quote. There you go. The next time you believe something called IRS or CBS or HRS, whatever the hell you think is coming after you, whip up Barack Obama's quote. Say, wait a second. 
Can you say that the, the founders of this nation envisioned that when they gave us the gift of self-government? Isn't that the greatest gift that we were given is the right to self-govern? Yeah. So are you trying to govern me? Didn't Barack Obama say I'm self-governing? Yeah. See, because you guys can't take the lead. You guys always want to hide behind somebody else, let somebody else take the... It's like the second mouse gets the cheese. Exactly. You don't want to step in a trap, but if you see me step in a trap, I say, oh boy, look, the cheese, look what Carl left us. Carl left us the cheese. Oh boy, this is swell. We're going to enjoy the cheese. Oh, sorry about Carl, he died. You know, that's a shame. Or he broke his leg or his spine got snapped in half. Whatever. <laughs> this is what most I was people are more, Most people are more than willing to push somebody else out in front. See what right, and see, if it, and see if it works. Yeah, exactly. Right, so I tell you guys, it's self-governing. Why can't you guys just make a stand like I do, not violently, and just say, wait a second, when, when did I lose the ability to self-govern? And they say, well, you broke the law. I say, oh, law. Hmm. What does the law mean, sir? Well, no, 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 that's a code. You're, you're reading a code, you're reading New York Code or Virginia Code, you're reading a code, right? No, code and law is not the same thing. Would you like to unroll the public law and bring the law into the court? Well, no, we're just going to bring a little piece of the law into the court. We're, we're, no, you didn't break the law. What you did is you broke a, a piece of the law, which we call a code. Well, how about you just bring a whole fucking law into the court? Maybe there's something in the law that shows that what I, I did was lawful. Maybe you're just bringing the one little tiny piece that shows that what I did was wrong. Out of Maybe you guys are just taking it out of context. There you go. You knew what I was going to say. You're okay. taking it out of context. Because that's exactly how I beat a, a traffic ticket here in Virginia back in 2007. I said to the judge, I said, Reed, are you going to let me bring the public law into the court? And that's the very damn first thing I said. I said, I, I will be done in less than two minutes if you let me bring the law into the court. And he wouldn't let me do it. He said, that's not the way we do it. Maybe you're from New York and you don't stand. We do this first. First, we bring the facts, and then we bring the law. I said, why follow up with the facts if the law doesn't exist? Let the law come to the court. He says, no. So he's ready to read the... I'm not going to tell you the whole damn story again. But he was starting to read the sentence. And he's like, well, you know, we, the court finds you guilty. I said, whoa. I said, he says, what? It's my turn to talk. I said, oh, no, no, I know rules of court. I'm the one who brought this claim before the court. I get to talk. I'm the one who controls this court. This is my court. This is not your court. The order of this court is going to be my order. And I order that the law, of the, uh, the law gets uh, read into the record. He says, what law? I said, not only my law, it's your law. He said, what? Virginia Code 1950, section 14.133. Read the law into the record. So he's, I said, I printed it out at 9 o'clock this morning before I came here. It's nice and warm and fresh. Mm, I still smell the ink here. I want to give you guys each a copy, but nobody accept my gift. I tried to present the law to the court, and you guys all stuck your nose up at me. You won't take my, present the law to the court. He said, oh, I got a laptop of people. I'll read it off the, the official Virginia website. I said, oh, so you think I'm committing fraud? You think I'm lying? You think I just, you know, manipulated and I wrote the Word document, you know, I printed it out this morning so it reads in my favor, huh? You don't trust me? Great. That, that's just lovely. I said, go ahead and just read it right off the website. So he read it and he was like, well, so the first, uh, he said, the first offense of driving in the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, backwards is uh, a $50 fine, one point in a license. Second offense is a... Uh, uh, three points off on your license, two hundred fifty dollar fine. Third offense is five hundred dollars, and a six month uh, uh, a suspended license. I said, yeah. And he says, well, you're guilty of that. I said, oh, please read the law. He's like, what? I said, read the law. Read the law into the court. He says, what? I look, look, look at the bottom. Read it. Read the whole law into the court. He says, it's lawful to drive in a Commonwealth in reverse if. And he was like, blah, 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 blah. He was like, huh, case dismissed. I said, no, it's discharged, but I'm not going to explain to you the difference between discharge and dismissed, because when it's discharged, I come back here and see you as all, and I can own this county. I said, but I ain't going to do that. I ain't got better things to do than waste my time with your silly shit. I said, I'm going home. But when they read the whole entire law, the law says it's lawful to drive in reverse as long as you don't cause any harm to men or injure property while you're doing so. So when you read the whole entire law, there is always a loophole to do whatever the hell you did. There's always a loophole. There's always a way out for man. You can't bind a man. Can't be done. You can't create a law which will bind me. Can't be done. Why? Because I created you, asshole. That's why you can't bind me. I can never be your slave. You always have to work for me, for my benefit. You can never harm me. I'm the man. You are the government. You are me. Yep. 
So it just blows their minds when you just have that simple concept. I said, look, the guys from the Virginia Code of 1950, the guys in 1950 understood it when they wrote the damn thing. You guys are forgetting it. 50, 60 years later, you forgot. You work for me. You can't create a law which is going to cause me harm. Or monetary compensation damage when nobody's been heard. You can't do it. Maybe someday in the future you can, but not today. And I'm not going to let you get away with it. My grandfather didn't let you get away with it. I'm certainly not going to let you get away with it. I'm self-governing. That's all I'm trying to do on this freaking show. I mean, this isn't rocket science what I'm doing. I, love it. I don't think it is. I thought everybody knew this crap. 